So, we have been discussing a lot of things regarding uh, geotechnical engineering one starting from starting from origin of the soils and uh, rock cycle different type of soils their classification system. Uh, we have talked about how do they originate, how do they get formed and how do they get deposited. Now, in today's lecture uh, in continuation with whatever we have been discussing, I will give you some examples of the transported soils which are quite useful in modern day uh, geotechnical engineering. So, if you remember geologically we had differentiated between two types of groups, one is uh, transported, another one is residual. I think I cited uh, examples of residual soils and in today's lecture I will be talking about the transported soils and some of the examples. See first in the category is loess. We discussed about this in the last lecture also. So, truly speaking these are the wind blown deposits. Sometimes we also call them as aeolian. They are weakly cemented. So, for all practical purposes these are the loose materials and when we talk about the cementation mostly this is the calcium carbonate bond. Sometime back I had talked about why desert sands can be utilized as the uh, construction material particularly in concrete. I think now you can get the answer that uh, most of the ALN deposits or the lowest soils they have weakly cemented calcium carbonate bonds and this calcium carbonate can be utilized for making concrete all right because of the pozzolanicity. Normally these type of soils are formed in arid or semi arid deposits. So, arid regions are the ones where you have dry climate particularly like deserts and the beauty of these type of deposits is that these deposits stand in almost vertical banks. So, most of these deposits are almost vertical. So, if you see the sand dunes. So, the whole intention is that whenever you get time please go through it and some of the questions which you are asking about the reclamation and uh, you know land creation. I think I have given some examples. I think I also gave you an example that uh, most of the oil deposits in present day circumstances are located at these type of soils. So, the big issues is issues are how to make these infrastructure which are going to sit on this deposit stable because the key word here is you know it is a weakly cemented material and if you remember when we were talking about the fundamental properties of the grains these are the grains which are very light in weight. All right. And particularly if you look at their microstructure which we will be discussing maybe after 2 or 3 lectures, 
you will find that they have lot of furry structure on the surface. So, if the surface of the particle is like this, it is not going to be as smooth and as spherical as the river transported sands would be. Here you will find lot of furs on the surface. If you look at the microstructure of this particle and this helps them in getting airborne alright when wind comes and they form a near vertical bank. Let us introduce the word near vertical. The biggest difficulty here is these systems keep on moving you know sand dunes they keep on moving or shifting. And because of this, it is very difficult to lay the foundations on them or make a structure on them. This is one of the reasons why there is no clear cut boundary between the two nations, our neighbors and ourselves. I hope many of you understand this was an interesting project which was uh, you know I was contacted by BRO, but then the difficulties are I hope you can understand we are not very much accustomed of living in uh, dust storms. So, you have to spend some time over there. So, when the sand dunes keep on shifting, the big problem is how do you lay the foundations, alright. And that is one of the reasons that uh, why we do not have a clear cut demarcation of the boundary between the two uh, nations. Geologically, I hope you will realize that most of these deposits are coming from the desert, which used to be a water body. So, that is the connection between, see the question one of you should have asked from where the calcium carbonate is coming in this type of soils. So, that is the link and long back one of you had asked this question regarding you know tracing the rock minerals, the soil minerals. So, this is a key word, how to make sure that the soils have calcium carbonate. So, calcium carbonate is a peculiar mineral, I would say I am using the word mineral, clear not the oxide and the salt. Now, this mineral is coming mostly from the marine environment and hence this becomes a part of the entire uh, Lewis system. The second in the category is what is known as a tuff. Have you come across this word ever? No? Check it on net and find out apart from the soil where else tuff has been used. The soils coming out of this is tuffaceous soils, check it in the meantime. And there was a very famous case also which was going on related to the tuff, did you get it? It used to be a denim cloth and there was a company known as Tuff, alright. And then there was an interesting litigation going on and read all those stories there. These are basically small grain slightly cemented volcanic ashes. And they are mostly uh, transported by either wind or water. Try to check out whether we get tuff uh, deposits in India or not. Whenever you get time, please go back to your hostels and check where these deposits are located. Though I have given you a link also and you may uh, try to understand which part of the country you come from and what are the soil deposits at that particular location. Sometime back I was telling you in modern day science and technology, you know after asking your name, 
The second question would be you come from which place, what type of soil you have there, what are the challenges, what are the problems in case you have to continue in this profession. So, that becomes your introduction. You understand the context changes very fast. So, after your name, the place which you belong to now by virtue of your studies you are from Bombay. So, you should be aware of the geomorphological conditions which prevail in Bombay city alright. The third in category is uh, bentonite. I think I have already given enough history about bentonites. Uh, these are the deposits which are mostly available in the western part of the country. Uh, Bhuj area is very famous for this. Atomic industry depends a lot on the bentonite and even the construction industry also depends a lot on the bentonite. Why? Because of the thixotropic behavior. So, this material is thixotropic in nature. What is thixotropy? So, suppose if I take a small sample of this material in my pump, add 2 3 drops of water, alright, and then let it become saturated, and if I temp it, alright, if I disturb it, what is going to happen? The water gets oozed out. That means there is a segregation of water with this material which is bentonite. And again if you leave it for some time, the material again gains strength, alright. So, this is a fundamental property associated with the minerals uh, and incidentally bentonite happens to be belonging to the family of Montmorillonite. We will discuss about this later, alright. So, these are the type of minerals which are very notorious and in conventional subject they have always been termed as unwanted materials, not bentonite, the monolithic material. So, those of you who come from Vidarbha region, central part of Maharashtra, MP, Karnataka, you know, you must be seeing black cotton soil there. So, the constituent of the black cotton soil would be a cousin brother of bentonite, but by virtue of this material having thixotropic effect, this has become a boon in the nuclear industry and we will discuss about this if time permits. So, if you want to dispose the atomic waste which is having very high radioactivity, which is having very high chemical concentration, which is having very high temperatures, this deposits are going to be the best deposits or I can create a system where I will use this material as a buffer material. Check what is the meaning of the word buffer if you read some papers on the net. There is a lot of research going on internationally in this subject. So, government of India spends a lot of money in characterizing the bentonite from different parts of the country and checking their worthiness as a buffer material for waste disposal which is highly toxic and hazardous alright. Now, buffer is something I am sure you must have used this term in the chemistry. Alright, if I want to maintain the pH of a system, I have a buffer tablet of 7, 9, 6, 8, whatever. So, truly speaking, in this case, what happens is the buffering is between the waste unit canisters, which are made up of lead. I am sure you must have done your 10 plus 2 physics or chemistry because lead happens to be a retardant. So, I will contain all the waste in the lead canisters. Canisters are nothing but the containers. I will bury them deep inside the ground. 150 meter, 200 meter depending upon the type of activity which I have in the waste and then cover it with this material. To make it more workable, I am using a word workable. That means, on its own this material cannot be used much, alright. So, I will have to add something to this. Now, this becomes engineering with the soils clear. So, we will add something to this, we will make good buffers and this becomes the best possible disposal place for atomic waste. Read more and more about this, I would not be getting time to discuss much about these things, but the second course which I offer for PGs and earlier undergraduates, um, there I used to teach uh, about the uh, geomechanics of atomic waste disposal. 
the fourth category would be or the fourth transported type of the soil would be a glacial till. Tillage is something which is known as this remains tillage all right. So, when you say glacial till this is the remains which is coming out of the glacial activity. In one of the lectures we were talking about avalanche if you remember. So, avalanche is one of the reasons for causing the glacial tills. So, in the mountainous regions if you go towards Manali, Rotang Pass and all those areas a big problem would be you know how to deal with these type of soils and I will show you some of the situations in today's lecture. This is also known as the bouldery clay. So, those of you who come from Himachal Pradesh in particular all right or maybe upper reaches of Himalayas or the lower reaches of Himalayas you will realize that the big difficulty there is to lay the foundations. Why? Because these type of materials are having a combination of a clay fraction which is very fine particle and boulders which are very big in size clear. So, I cannot sit on a boulder earthquake comes these type of deposits are going to get destabilized very fast. So, that is the reason that unfortunately most of the cities and towns in the hilly regions of the country have remained undeveloped or underdeveloped. Are you getting this point? These areas have been ignored completely. So, these are deposited by the glacial activities. Try to find out what are the major projects which are going on in the Himalayan regions nowadays. Can you name some of them? Major projects, very important question. All right, you should be knowing all these things. Big, big tunnels which are being inaugurated or which have been inaugurated recently. Remember those names. All right. So, this is all about the application part which cannot be taught in the class as such. So, these glacial tills are the glacial activities and not transported or segregated by by water. Very difficult deposits of the soils to handle. Then comes the warped clays. Any idea what these type of clays are? See nature also does miracles. I hope all of you will agree with this. And if you really want to enjoy the miracles of the nature, the geomechanics, geotechnical engineering or the soil mechanics is the right subject to study. Now, what happens over here is it sh nature shows patterns of formation. So, what happens is there will be a layer. I think we should start from the bottom most portion. There will be a layer of a material, second deposition on the layer, third and fourth and this happens in a pattern and this pattern is dictated by the climatic conditions. So, if you have silt, clay, silt, clay, we will discuss in details that what is meant by silt, what is meant by clay. So, today what I have done is I have introduced another term in the realm of soil mechanics uh, that is silt. To understand quickly silt, clay, boulders are nothing but the sizes of the soils or soil particles clear. So, these are types of the soils depending upon their physical attributes 
nothing more than that. So, if I use the classification system that how the particle size looks like or what is the particle size, what is the shape, what is the morphology under this category this type of a deposit comes. Now, it so happens that whenever there is a warm weather silt gets deposited and whenever there is a cold weather the clay gets deposited. So, every 6 months you know when the weather changes uh, the deposition pattern also changes. So, these are basically alternate deposits the thickness of these deposits could be substantial few tens of meters even. I think now you can realize what is the influence of the environmental activities on the formation of the soil. All right. Normally, this type of things happen in fresh water and lakes. All right. This could also be the outwash from the glaciers. <coughs> Whatever gets washed out from the glaciers. Now, silt deposition occurs when the system or the environment is warm plus heavy runoff. However, the cold weather is during sorry uh, the clay formation is during cold and less runoff. Truly speaking this type of deposits will be forming in few years. So, you might be having a geological time associated with this. which could be of the order of few years. There is another category of uh, the transported soils which is known as marl. Check what is the dictionary meaning of the word marl. Marl basically corresponds to the marine environment all right and what is marine environment? Bombay region is a marine environment all right wherever you have coast wherever you have seashore clear. So, the land side is known as onshore and towards the sea it is known as offshore. So, marley soils are very fine grained materials and their origin is marine environment. There is another category which is known as gumbo, G U M B O. These are very sticky materials. And when a soil is going to be sticky, it is also going to be plastic in nature and dark colored. See, I have intentionally used the word here plastic. So, you must be wondering what is meant by this plasticity of the material. So, we will study in details about the plasticity of the material. Plastic material is the one which can be molded the way you want. So, when you were a kid still you are a kid no doubt, but when you were a very small kid what you used to do? You used to take a soil 
add some water and then you may say make a ball out of it, is it not? So, that comes because of the plasticity of the material. For the guys who are in agriculture, the way they differentiate between a good soil and a bad soil for agriculture would be simple test. They do not require very high fi laboratories. They will take soil, add some water and form a laddu out of it, clear or a ball out of it. And then what we used to do when you are kids, we used to throw it and let it stick on the wall, is it not? If you have not done it, do it right now, the right time to learn about the materials. Now, if it remains stick over there, it shows that it has some properties which are plastic in nature. After some time, it may remain there or as the moisture goes out of it, it may fall down, clear. So, these are the properties which people will like to look at when they do construction with the soils. And remember, soils are the materials, clear. I can use them the way I want to. I can create a situation and I can use it. I cannot say that I am not going to do my engineering over here in this type of deposit. Is this correct? And that is what the engineering with the materials like soils would be. I have used the word dark colored in nature. You remember some time back I was discussing the difference between transported soils which are crystal clear particles, very fresh looking pinkish, brownish color, yellowish color. But now there is a situation where transported soils of gumbo nature are dark colored also. The reason is look at the history of formation. They got the sticky property, very plastic in nature and they might be entrapping lot of bacterial activity in it. And that bacterial activity under anaerobic condition might be giving the dark color. This is also a situation. There is another interesting category of the soils which is known as peats. Have you come across this word? you get a chance to go to uh, Scandinavian countries and if you have to live over there, check it out on net, uh, it is a beautiful phenomena where peat deposits, they get disintegrated. So, imagine today your Jimkhana ground is intact, clear, but tomorrow morning when you get up, you will realize that some part of this Jimkhana ground has vanished. There are a lot of videos which are available on YouTube, uh, check it where these type of deposits are. Now, this type of disintegration happens because this material is of highly organic in nature, a lot of organic matter is present in this type of soils, alright. And this organic matter disintegrates, so we call them as organic soils. For me, there is no difference between these type of soils which nature has produced and the soils which I am getting out of reclamation and rehabilitation of landfills. Is this okay? So, nowadays the business is to rehabilitate the landfills. Check it, it gives you a very good opportunity to start your business, rehabilitation of the landfills. How many major landfills India would be having right now? Every city would be having at least one or two. Delhi is a blessed city, how many landfills it has? 3, 4 major ones which are always in highlights, national network, why? So, what happens? In the last lecture, we were discussing about the issues related with organic matter. So, the more and more organic matter decomposes, what is going to happen? Yes, one of you, very nice, excellent. So, this is the source of very good, then what will happen? Yeah, so the more and more CH4 emission takes place, what is going to happen? Sorry? 
true one is greenhouse effect next as a civil engineer geotechnical engineer i am really not much interested in this i am more interested in the mega problem so there are the landfills who are falling they become unstable they catch fire clear so most of the time these landfills are burning so what's going to happen if they are burning all the time so next time when you go to delhi these three famous landfills what do you notice there most of the time they are burning and when they are burning what's going to happen they are emitting carbon dioxide nox ox in the environment and particularly in the cold climate during november to february what's happening then major problem so i need not to go to natural deposits see as a human activity i have created more and more storage of peats or peat like material clear so i've given you two three examples of what pt type of material would be the organic material could be naturally deposit forming a peat man made activity ch4 the landfills might catch fire is this okay and once it catches fire it becomes unstable is okay peats normally would have odor one of the interesting things about the peats is that these are fibrous in nature whenever a soil or a material exhibits lot of fibers present in it what's going to happen we were discussing this the other day what is the problem associated with this the presence of fibers organic content they have water holding capacity i think we discussed in the last lecture so the more and more organic matter you have in a soil mass it will be holding more and more moisture is it good or bad why you are right it's bad but why yeah so there is no absolute answer remember the profession changes and good or bad changes so the guys who are doing you know uh, farming of let's say rice you must have seen the way the farming of rice is done what do they need they excavate the soil they put lot of organic material into it why it should be holding more and more water go to the north east where uh, tea gardens are present so i am sure you must be aware that uh, tea gardening requires lot of water and that's the reason tea is normally produced in the regions which are having high rainfall so whenever you have this type of materials which are fibrous organic in nature they would have very high water holding capacity the more and more the more and more water holding capacity is the more and more disintegration is going to happen the more and more disintegration occurs all these issues are going to become major problems is this okay as far as engineering is concerned these type of deposits are a real challenge to handle why because they are extremely compressible these are extremely compressible materials so no wonder when you hear you know some of the buildings settling down the first floor second floor going inside the ground floor all right the first indication would be that the soil which is present at that location must be organic type okay for r&d guys this is a bliss those who are into r&d check it out on net there is a big group which is working on restoration of pt soils restoration of peats is a big challenge and become an expert in the subject there are not many guys in the world who are working in these areas and i'm sure that you'll realize very soon that most of the countries have a big challenge 
in terms of the PT deposits. So, the big question is how would you restore them? I think this is a UNDP program also where they are trying to safeguard the cities and the countries which are mostly located on PT deposits. Now, one of the ways of doing this could be I am just giving you a very vague idea, do not quote me tomorrow anywhere, alright. What would be the vaguest idea to stabilize these type of deposits? Cut off the supply of oxygen, how will you do that? Wrap them in a polythene, how would you wrap the entire soil mass on which the big big buildings are sitting in the polythenes? Imagine, are you realizing? Now, this is where the surgery is required. So, most of the geotechnical engineering guys who are in the profession become surgeons of the soils and the situations because what you have to do? You have to give a solution. So, there are very interesting ways of dealing with this material and try to read as much as you can. What bacteria is going to do on organic matter? I think now you have understood. So, the more and more bacterial activity you expose this material to, you are inviting more and more problems, clear? So, that is what I was saying, you contain the whole system, cut off the oxygen, these guys cannot survive there, you agree, unless they are anaerobic, are you getting this idea? So, the moment they become anaerobic, different problem, the more and more you are going to produce this, you cannot do anything, then you have to do something different. So, suppose if you are doing this activity, make sure your answer was incomplete, you say that my answer was incomplete, it is not incorrect. So, what I will do is, I will create a situation where this activity happens to be under anaerobic systems, greater depths where the oxygen supply is less, clear, but still they will disintegrate. Another thing, very early for you to catch these concepts of the subject, precipitation of any system because of the bacteria in fine grained soils like clays is going to be absolutely difficult because the pore sizes are extremely small. Somebody wanted to ask about this pore size or something, I asked you to write on the back of your notebook. So, anyway this is one of the answers, clear? So, another category is muck. These are basically fine particles. And this is the mixture of inorganic soils see muck is a term normally we use it as a mesonomer for slush is it not is a mucky thing mostly these are black decomposed organic matter also so it is a mixture of inorganic soils and black decomposed organic matter. Normally these type of systems you will find them accumulated close to waterlogged areas. All right, particularly in swamps. There is another category which is known as humus. So, suppose somebody asks you a question what are the organic soils which you have come across? Peats are number one, muck is number two, humus is also a organic material, all right. These are mostly dark brown, these are organic matters, and this is the normally top soil 
of a deposit. The one of the characteristics of this material is that this would be having partially decomposed vegetation in it. One interesting thing on a philosophical side, I hope you can realize that the soils are normally made by nature or natural process, but nowadays people are talking about the man-made soils also. So, the moment this municipal solid waste comes in the picture, you know, the humus is normally occurring naturally, but most of these characteristics are also present in the remains of municipal solid waste, clear? And hence, there are many guys who are directly rehabilitating the landfills and uh, they are using the remains of the landfills as agricultural material, it is a big business. Then there is another category, hard pan. As the name suggests, these are going to be the hard deposits and sometimes mistaken as the rocks. Later on, you will study one of the tests uh, to confirm whether a material is soil or rock is to take a small sample and soak it in water. If it disintegrates over 72 hours, it falls in the category of the soils, if it does not, it falls in the category of the rocks. So, you were asking this question in the very first lecture, where to lay the foundations. It may so happen that when I am doing investigations, I may come across this material or deposit, it is very hard and I might mistake this as a hard strata, rocks, clear. But subsequently, when you excavate the soil, it might get disintegrated very fast, okay. So, this is the property though it is a hard deposit having cohesion, I hope you understand the word cohesion. Cohesion is something where the particles of the soils are you know cohesed, they are they are bound with something. So, that is what is known as cohesion, all right. So, if two particles suppose if like a glue, I have two particles, I will put glue on both the particles, press them, they form a matrix. So, this material shows cohesion, cohesion is something which, which indicates that the particles are glued with each other. And the acid test of this material would be soaking in water. Acid test means you have to differentiate this material with the rocks and this is one of the best ways to differentiate. There is another category of the soils, which is known as colluvial soils. Check it on in the dictionary what is the meaning of the word colluvial. The other day we were talking about alluvium, now it is colluvium. What is the meaning of the word colluvium? So, when you travel through Bombay on Pune Express Highway, Khandala Ghat is very famous for rock debris falling during the rains, is it not? So, we say rain induced slope failures. So, you are right, the colluvial soils are the ones which are formed because of the accumulation of rock mass when they get detached from the parent body and the parent body is nothing but the rocks, all right and they get deposited over there. We call them as accumulation of rock debris. What are debris? Discards, all right, construction debris for that matter. 
we also call them as tallus. This is the name of the soil, tallus, and mostly they get deposited at the uh, base or the foot of a cliff. You know what is a cliff? Almost a vertical system of rocks, all right, near vertical. So, those of you who might have gone to Saptashengi, very close to Nasik, the rocks are cliffs near vertical. So, suppose if I draw a system of rocks like this, all right. Now, this is a cliff, it is not a slope. So, the beauty is that most of these are the disintegrated accumulated rock debris at the foothills also known as tallus. You are from Uttarakhand, which place? Dehradun, very good. Have you ever driven from Dehradun towards um, higher reaches let us say towards Badrinath, Kedarnath and all these areas? Yeah, so what do you find? Is there some similarity between what I am discussing here and the type of problem these guys are facing in uh, the regions of upper reaches of Uttarakhand, correct? What are the difficulties? You have huge accumulation of these materials, so you cannot even there the foundation, you cannot make the buildings. This is man made also by the way, they are chopping out all the hills, okay. And another category would be mine tailings. Is there anybody in the class from let us say eastern part of the country, Bhilai, Jamshedpur, you are from which place? What do you see normally when you pass through a railway, railways on both the sides of the railway track, what do you see during night time particularly, nights, you are not observed. See, civil engineering is all about observations. So, if you do not have observations, unfortunately nobody can uh, make you a good engineer and technologist and civil engineering. What I am trying to hint at is most of the mining activities all right, thermal power plants are in the vicinity of Jamshedpur. So, what you see is when you pass by the railway track, both the sides of the railway tracks are having huge dumps and some of these dumps might be you know uh, having fire. Some of these dumps are the mine tailings. So, you take out the mineral from the mines, <laughs> process them, extract the you know good part of it which is useful to you, 80 percent remains unutilized, throw it somewhere, clear? human activities, soils form because of the human activities. So, mine tailings are the one mostly these are uh, silty materials. Anybody in the class from Jharsiguda area, Jharsiguda, no? Check it on net why Jharsiguda is so important for, for India being a muscular nation, you understand what is the meaning of this? India being a muscular nation, steel makes you muscular and apart from that those days are gone when steel used to make muscular. Now, <coughs> what is happening? Nuclear power, nuclear energy, weapons, medicines, clear? Radiotherapy, different types of radiations which you are using for agriculture and so many things. So, Jharsiguda is the place where most of the what type of mines are available, link the two things, uranium very good, clear. So, the more and more uranium India wants what is going to happen? I use some figure, I said 30 percent, 25 percent is useful, rest is all discarded, tailings clear. So, the more and more mining you are doing any type of mines, the more and more discards you produce 
So, these discards are being just dumped. Anybody is there from Rai, Raipur? Korba? <laughs> you ever been to? Huh? Airport? Near Korba. Very good. So, what do you see in Korba region? Man made mountains. You have seen or not? Very good. I am sure I am happy. At least one person is aware of what is happening. So, the more and more mining happens, the more and more man made hills are getting created. So, I am sure your kids will not go to Himalayas for whatever amusement. They will say these are the Himalayas created by sale people, all right, and TPC guys and so on. And this is a big business by the way. I start rehabilitating these mountains. Uh, this is what is coming in practice now. People are trying to rehabilitate them and leasing them out for different amusement purpose. So, it so happens that the mine tailings are the silty materials and they are hydraulically filled. Can you read this hydraulically? I do not know whether you are aware or not, conveying soil hydraulically is filling of the mine tailings. So, if I am transporting the soil hydraulically and creating a beach is reclamation, alright. The principle remains same. So, I will take a pipe, I will mix the soil, I will pump it, I will fill up the land. The mine tailings which are coming out of the industrial process, very fine particles, I will deposit them in ponds there, hydraulically this becomes mine tailings, clear, yeah, lot of similarities are there. See, it is very interesting when politicians meet they talk about politics, when two geotechnical engineers meet they talk about the soils. They say, please come to our place and I will take you to the deposits of these type of soils. You understand? So, this becomes your dharma. See, when we talk about the deposits of the soils regional, India is an interesting place. You know why? Because in our country, we have several deposits of soils which is very, very rare. You will not get these type of deposits everywhere in the world. Because most of the countries are so small that they would not be even sitting on one deposit of the naturally occurring soils. So, these deposits may mostly depend upon uh, the type of climatic conditions. By any chance you who is from Indore you said you are from Indore. Indore is becoming a hub petrochemical hub of the country. You agree with the statement? So, it depends upon the climatic conditions, it depends upon the topography. And this also depends upon the geology of the formation. So, first in the category would be marine deposits because we are sitting in Bombay, the coastal region and 